Hey, what's up, fam? Thank y'all for tuning in once again. As always, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the notification bell. So every time I drop a video, you will be the first to know about it. So we got a problem in our country. We talk about it all the time. Our youth have been demonized. Our own quote-unquote demon time. You know, they, they kind of stop saying demon time because they know it's like a negative connotation. Nobody wants to think of their kids as being demons. But unfortunately, when you look at the news, look at the crime, a lot of it's being committed by, you know what I'm saying, young kids in their teenage, you know, in their teenage years, robbing, deleting, assaulting. It's just happening. But that's because one, the nuclear family has been broken up. That's one, that's one reason. Two, with the nuclear family being broken up, it can cause, you know, single parent households where that parent has to work multiple jobs thanks to the the, the high cost of rent, living, rent, uh, transportation, food, insurance, etc., clothing, utilities, everything's going up. So now a person who may have got away with it with one job and government assistance now had to have like two or three jobs. I mean, that's been going on for a long time, too, but still. There's no really no real structure in the house. Kids are either on the video games all day or they're hanging out with other hanging out with other young dummies who don't have any discipline <clears throat> and they're learning lessons. They learn the wrong lessons. And so there's no foundation. I myself, I read the scriptures, study the scriptures, you know, can go back and forth, dialogue with the scriptures as much as in the body. But what I don't know, I always look it up and research. But, and I've never, I went from being, you know, raised in a Baptist church to going to Islam and back to Baptist church to being, you know, claiming the Hebrew Israelites, what have you. Never have I tried to force anything like on my kids or my wife or anything like that in the past or whatever. Never did that. What I did do is, hey, this is how I'm living. This is what I see. If you got a question, let's dialogue. I want y'all to see what I'm looking at. <clears throat> this is where I'm going. It's dialogue. If you agree with you, agree with you, don't you don't. It don't, it don't matter. But my kids, they still go to church. You know what I'm saying? They grown. Like my oldest child, she she goes to church where she's living. My youngest daughter, she still goes to church and stuff. So they have a foundation. Foundations to help them stay rooted just in case things get bad, just in case they get any kind of idea. Cause, and that was my that was my thing. I said, I didn't care. If you go to church, go to church, it's fine. You know, so I always said that the, the least that, is, that black Americans should do, remember how we used to talk about the moms or the grandmothers who would drop their kids off of church and they burn off? Well, you know what? That may be what needs to happen again just to get these babies back in the scripture. You know, the, the, don't, don't get me wrong, the parents need to be going to if they need some kind of reassurance or refreshment. Refresher, not refreshment. It's not, not the first, it's not communion. But if they need some kind of refresher course on how to live and, and judge their lives accordingly. But them babies need to be somewhere. I don't care if it's a church, I don't care if it's a mosque, or a temple, but somewhere to where they're getting some kind of foundation on how to live properly. Because a lot of these youngsters are not getting that. And that's why the way the country and the world is going is getting worse and it's not getting better. And it's going to get to a point to where I remember Umar Johnson said something years ago and people got pissed. He was talking about these young boys out here committing these crimes and you can't control them. And he was saying they may have to be taken out. And everybody got upset because, you know, well, who who talks about taking out youngers? Well, the thing about it is they're taking out themselves. Think about it. They're taking out themselves. The police are taking them out. That's what y'all want to say. Make y'all, you know, if that's what y'all want to hear. But they're taking out themselves every day. You see it in the news all the time. Read the go, go, shoot, go to. Uh, like the web's internet, you know, obituary websites. Go to news site. Go to any local news website, and guarantee you somewhere during that week there's going to be a story about somebody. Man, I get 
I get I, I get uh, uh, alerts every day. I'm saying every day on my phone on local news, and I don't know how I signed up for this these alerts or whatever. But every time, like when crimes are committed, it pops up on my phone. And I get stuff all over Dallas every day. Somebody's got shot, especially in in the Grove where I grew up at. I get some every day. Something is wrong. The world is going in the wrong direction. Now, maybe we can't stop it because, you know, if you believe the scriptures and the revelations, how the world going to get worse. And eventually the most high going to have to wipe it, come down, wipe it all out, take his people, uh, you know, put his people in heaven, paradise, whatever. So be it, maybe nothing you can do. But what you need to do is make sure that your kids is rooted and understanding in that belief so that they can live their life. Because basically what you should be doing is just live and let live. Commit no crimes, cause no malice, cause no hatred. You know what I'm saying? Love. But to say the greatest commandment in the scriptures is love. Just love everybody. If you love everybody, respect everybody, treat everybody the way you really want to be treated, we would have no problems. But unfortunately, like I said, a lot of these youngsters don't have it. Grandma can only pray for you so much and grandma can only live for so long. Eventually, it's going to be all on you. And it's going to be all on your kids. So like I said, you may just have to drop your children off at church in Sunday school every Sunday and on Wednesdays. But with that being said, I'm going to bring you this story. Tell me what you think about it. This is from Yahoo.com News, and it reads, by way of CNN, and it reads, Oklahoma State Superintendent announces all schools must incorporate the Bible and the Ten Commandments in curriculums. Now, you know, this is going to be controversial. It says all Oklahoma schools are required to incorporate the Bible and the Ten Commandments in their curriculums. Effective immediately, the state's chief education officer announced in a memorandum Thursday. I remember going to this hotel one time, and like in the front, this is somewhere in Dallas somewhere, and I and they had the Ten Commandments like posted outside, you know, didn't know why, but you know, it's like, hey, you know what? That makes sense because my gosh, people are going, people are going away from scripture reading, scriptural beliefs and just committing heinous acts. So every now and then you need to have a reminder of what's right and what's wrong. It says at a state board of education meeting, Oklahoma State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Ron Walter said the Bible is one of the most foundational documents used for the constitution and the birth of our country, which is technically true because remember they love to say this country was built on biblical and Christian principles. Forget the slaves, forget how you wiped out all the natives. Well, like wiped out the majority of the natives either put them in slavery or kill them all and call them savages. Forget all that. Other than that, it was built on biblical principles, right? So now you have to, you know what I'm saying, put your money where your mouth is. And it seems like old boy in Oklahoma is trying to do that. It's crystal clear to us that in the Oklahoma academic standards on a Title 70 on multiple occasions, the Bible is a necessary historical document to teach our kids about the history of this country, to have a complete understanding of Western civilization, to have an understanding of the basis of our legal system. Walter said, I get it. And I love the way that they used law to be able to bring the Bible in because I don't think I seen anything that said Christian or religion. It just said the Bible is the basis of a lot of legal system, which it is because remember, so help me God and where they get it from. They got it from the Bible. That's from the beginning. That's in the constitution. So if that's the case, you really can't deny the Bible. Now, somebody saying you need to be a Christian, or you need to pray to the Christian flag and Jesus and all that kind of stuff, then that could be a problem. But I mean, legally, but if you're just talking about the 10 commandments, the laws, where the laws of the land came from, how, what it was based on, they supposedly use the Bible. So, Hey, I'm a hundred percent with it. Real talk. Every classroom in the state from five through 12 must have a Bible and all teachers must teach from the Bible in classroom. Walter said, I think fifth grade is kind of late. I mean, hey, you got to start where you can start because it's still learning. So I can understand. But shoot, you start. You got to start real, really start with them as babies. You know what I'm saying? Now, you might read the Ten Commandments and 
incorporated and implemented in your curriculum and in order to better explain how the law is written. But, you know, the kids might mess around and keep reading the scriptures and they'll tell you about, you know what I'm saying, the sins of the world and and how, you know, LMNOP ain't really tolerated in the Bible. And, you know, don't forget the thou shalt not kill, murder, steal, kill, murder, same thing. Uh, commit adultery, this, that, and the third, lie, cheat, all that kind of stuff. You know, you might read and say, hey, this, these acts that we were doing, that was not us, these acts that, not I'm talking about me, but these acts that, that are going on in the world that we're condoning, I want everybody else to condone, they really not, you know, really not conducive to the biblical living. So if we're going to follow these Ten Commandments, then we need to, in this part of the scriptures in the right, then why are we not following all the laws or all the beliefs? So it's, it's yeah, interesting how he did this. The Oklahoma Memorandum follows a law in Louisiana passed June 19th that requires all public classrooms to display the Ten Commandments. A group of Louisiana parents and civil rights organizations are suing the state over the new law, contending that uh, legislation, the legislation violates both Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court, precedent and the first amendment how's it violating if you how's it violating the first amendment if you if you put up 10 commandments as part of the first amendment oklahoma directive oklahoma's directive is in alignment is in alignment with the education standards approved on or about may 2019 with which all districts must comply according to a news release the bible is an indispensable historical and cultural touchstone walter said in a release without basic knowledge of it Oklahoma students are unable to properly contextualize the foundation of our nation. This is not merely an educational directive, but a crucial step in ensuring our students grasp the core values and historical context of our country. Man, whoever was the lawyer and or judge that researched this and wrote this up, whether they win or not, they still need a round of applause and uh, and, and probably a ra and raise their hourly rates. Because stuff like this is what makes me wish I would have got into law. Listen to Judge Joe Brown every day on, on YouTube. Make me wish I would have got into law. Because I just like the way law, how you interpret laws. Because just like the Bible, though, like interpreting the Bible. You can get into it with people. When people get pissed off. Y'all can go back and forth about interpretation. That's what I like about this. Dialogue. Uh, 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 going to get in debate with people and figuring out exactly what the forefathers or what the scriptures really mean. I love it. I love it. Interfaith Alliance, a national organization that seeks to protect religious freedoms, told CNN a statement Thursday, this is a blatant religious coercion that should have absolutely no place in public schools in Oklahoma and other state. I'm sorry. Like I said, the Constitution, unless you're going to, to me, I feel unless you're going to amend the Constitution and take that so help me God out, Take the whole belief system out and create your own laws and your own merits, which is, which is, which is not smart to me because that could get you in all kinds of trouble. Because what it say, believe, lean not under your own understanding, and that's why we got problems. Our own understanding create the LMNOP community and these transgender and all this kind of other stuff that's just blowing up around the world, trying to force people to believe something. If you want to go that way and you don't believe in what we believe in, then that's on you. That's between you and your you and your creator. Just like what I do is between me and my creator. And it is what it is. But try to force people to live a certain way. Try to force people to accept something. No matter what it is, it's just downright wrong. It's just downright wrong. Uh, true religious freedom means ensuring that no one religious group is allowed to impose their view upon all Americans. The vast majority of people of faith in this country reject these dangerous, intimidating efforts to force a Christian nationalist agenda into our schools, our courts, and our government. The statement said, like I said, I didn't see nothing about Christian on them. So nothing about Christian just said the Bible and their beliefs. It's kind of like with the whole reparations thing. And while a lot of people feel that we won't get reparations if you keep talking about Afri calling us African-American, using African-American and not using lineage. Because if you use lineage, you have a better chance of getting the money 
and the reparation that's, that's owed to your people. For like the example I gave before, like I believe there's some black farmers in this country that were awarded some money, but then the courts got sued because it was like, you can't give some, you can't discriminate against people when it comes to fed, the government can't discriminate against people based on race, which is very hypocritical because black Americans have lost a lot and a lot of things a lot have been stolen from us due to race, based on race. And we know this. We can't prove it legally on paper, but well, back in the day you could because they had bylaws and a lot of these HOAs that just said black folks couldn't live there. You had rules, you had signs and rules that said black folks couldn't come through the front, they had to go around back. Black folks but not coming in this town after sundown, things of that nature. But now they got rid of all that, but the ramifications are still lingering. So like I said, it's hypocritical. But if you say, hey, uh, George, like I say, George Govan was a black farmer, was a farmer. And he was denied, you know, certain loans, monies that other farmers got in the same area doing the same cropping. He, he, he was a great farmer. He knew what he was doing. He'd been doing all his life. There was really no reason he made good money. He was always good with his, with his crops, with his debt, with his payments, with the people. It was not a problem to society. There was no logical reason why this man should have been denied loans or farm equipment or good seeds or good crops. There's no reason. There's no logical reason, no real tangible reason why that should have happened. So he was denied un, un, unlawfully, unrighteously. So if you are a descendant of George Govan, you are entitled to this much money or you are entitled to these tax write-offs or, or these perks or, or farm equipment or whatever the case may be. You have a better chance of getting what you requested or what you, or what's rightfully yours than you would I said then you would by just saying black farmers African American farmers need reparation no nah, because now it's based on race that's how you, so you got to it's, it's it's the way it's the way you say it and like I said I never seen the word Christian in here all they said was the Bible and the Constitution and that the Bible and the Constitution was based on biblical principles Period. So I think they got a good, a dang on good argument. The new memo comes after the Oklahoma Supreme Court blocked an effort to establish the first publicly funded religious charter school in the country. The court on Tuesday ordered the state to rescind its contract with St. Isidore of Seville Catholic Virtual School in a 62 decision with one recusal. Under Oklahoma law, a charter school is a public school, wrote Justice James R. Winchester for the court. As such, a charter school must be non-sectarian. However, St. Isidore will evangelize the Catholic faith as part of his school curriculum while sponsored by the state. See, so it's saying that you can't be a Catholic school, but you can have Catholic teachings in the curriculum. Why does Colorado ruling one of the worst decisions the state Supreme Court has made and pledged to fight back? What the court did was rule against the parents of Oklahoma who have demanded more choices for their kids. What kind of kids? We have a great opportunity to make sure the parents had the most options for any parents, uh, most options of any parents in the country here in Oklahoma by giving them the ability to go to a public school, charter school, private school, and this will have been the most unique charter school in the country. So I want you all to know we will continue to fight back against this. We want the want to continue to provide an opportunity for parents to send their kids to high quality schools. The American Civil ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, applauded the decision saying charter schools are public schools that must be secular and serve all students. St. Isidore Seville Catholic Virtual School, which plans to discriminate against students, families, and staff and indoctrinate students into one religion, cannot operate as a public charter school. Okay, I get that. Using government money, public funds, taxpayers money, but it's funny how they pick and choose when you how, how 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 they can use your money, how your money can be used. Cause right now, tax money is going to migrants, is going to other countries 
all willy nilly, free will. And we ain't got nothing to say. We got no say so over. But trying to teach your kids some foundational biblical virtues and va and values is a problem. But that, but yeah, that's a that's a problem, right? Trying to get them, like I said, get them a core values to where they won't be out here, you know, committing crimes all willy nilly, robbing folks, stealing catalytic converters, you know what I'm saying, hunting, you know what I'm saying, pulling up on the ops and deleting them. There's a problem. Man, make it make sense. But again, hey, this is one of them things, and that's why we say, like in politics, this is an election year that. You vote on policy, not the politician, because I don't know if this man is racist. He's from Oklahoma. Ain't no telling. He might be a sus uh, suspected white supremacist. I don't know. I don't know if he's a bigot. I don't know if he's racist. But I do know that with, 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 with on this particular issue, I got no problem with it. So like I said, you vote on policy because you don't know how a person thinks about you as an individual. You could care less. Now, if he come and attack you personally and come after you directly to hold you back and hold you down and destroy you, by all means, you got all the rights of the world to defend yourself however you need to. But politically, if they're doing something that you agree with, you run with it. You don't worry about people saying, oh, I can't believe that you uh, got, you know what I'm saying, you side with this racist. Man, you, side with, you probably side with the racist every day when you go to school, when you go to work. When you're talking to your neighbor, when you're going to the grocery store and that person is checking out your, you know what I'm saying, checking you out, checking out your food, probably can't stand you. Some of the people that you're giving your money to probably can't stand you. They can't understand why you in the same store they in, how you get money to go in the same store they in. What you doing in this restaurant? Oh, you walking in the restaurant. All those black people, they probably ain't going to tip and then you throw out easily 20% just to, just to start. That's the way I do. When I go into restaurants, I start out, and it may not be a lot, but hey, I ain't a rich dude, so I ain't tripping, so I ain't. I, I, I don't mind saying this. When I go into a restaurant, I start out with 20%. That's, that's, why, that's why I look. When I walk through the door, before I walk in the door, the first thing I'm thinking right now, today, you just earned just about me getting out the car and, and, and opening that door. Whoever's serving me has earned 20% right now. Now, whether it goes up or goes down, it's up to the service I get when I walk through the door. If I get to the door and I got to wait a long time to be seated, then a tip can go down. If I get sit down and I'm not offered a drink after a certain amount of time, that tip can go down even more. You know, if a waitress, waiter or waitress only come to my table once, the whole time I'm sitting there, you can forget it. That tip is going down. I might give you something. You know what I'm saying? I make sure you make it minimum wage before I leave. That's the main thing. If I'm there an hour, if I'm there two hours, a minimum wage is seven fifty. Oh, I make sure you make seven fifty an hour. I won't. I mean, could you do? I mean, you came to work. I give you that. But other than that, but, but, but truthfully, if I'm sitting the front door too long, I'm leaving. If I sit down and I'm not offered a drink after about five minutes, I'm gone. So that's, you know what I'm saying? So that's in and of itself. I mean, that's just how I do when I'm in restaurants. But like I said, if you, I mean, like I said, if you, if you do a good job, you're doing great. <clears throat> but like I say, people, but I don't know how that waiter or waitress thinks. I don't know how that maitre d' thinks when they see me. They may think, oh, you know, may, they may think, why is how this brother in here? And they don't have drop this tip, 20, 30%, whatever it is. And they looking like, oh, you know, they, Probably can't believe that I did that or whatever, but hey, you did a good job. I don't care what you how you think about me. My food was good. I don't end up sick. And nothing was done to my food. And you treat and you treated me right. You you acted professional. You get you get, don't want to say blessed, but you get rewarded accordingly. Simple as that. But like I said, you don't know how people think, you don't know what they think of you when they see you. So don't base your decisions on that because I'm quite sure there are people that you can't stand, but you laugh and giggle in their face all day. So let's keep it a bug. But anyway, tell me what you think about this story. Leave your comments below. Let's share it with the world. Let's dialogue like we know how we do. Uh, support the channel. There's four ways you can support the channel. It don't cost you a dime. You can like, share, comment, and subscribe. 
They don't cost you anything, but maybe a couple of minutes out of your day. But if you do want to support monetarily, you can give super thanks, super chats, or go to the description box. There are links there that you can click on to where you can support monetarily. For instance, you can go to MarlonMorale.com where we got products of perfumes for men and women. We got silk do rags, got silk scarves, beard kits, and other things, high quality products that we, uh, I know that you will not disappointed, be disappointed in getting purchased for yourself, for your friends, your family, your loved ones. <clears throat> Try it out. I appreciate you, your support, however you want to do it. But anyway, with that being said, I leave you in peace and I'll see you on the other side.